Welcome back to Bloom at Home. We're celebrating Ireland's largest garden and lifestyle festival. Irish and Munster rugby player Peter O'Mahony is certainly not a man of singular talents. It only takes a quick glance at his Instagram feed to see that he's also a really accomplished gardener. This summer he's cultivated a wide range of perennials, shrubs, climbers and trees in his beautiful garden in Cork. And he's also been busy harvesting a bounty of early vegetables and his immaculately manicured lawn would put many of us to shame. So it's safe to say we're delighted he's joining us this afternoon to speak about his gardening efforts and how he makes the most of it. Remember, you can submit your questions for Peter via Slido. Peter, good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, I'm about to go in there cloud. Afternoon, Miriam. Thanks for having me on. Listen, your Instagram, it's a glory to behold. Uh, you have a real passion for gardening. Was it always something you were interested in? Yeah, it was, to be honest. Um, I, I, I've plenty of kind of early memories of, uh, of, of looking after my, my two grandmother's gardens at different points and um, spending time in West Cork with my uncle who, who, lived in, who lives in Castletown Bear and, and he, he had grew some of his own stuff and, and, and had a nice little plot down there. And it always was, uh, it always was a bit of a hobby and, and something I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed, to be honest. With you. So it was, it's been around for a while. And has your garden, do you think it's become more important to you during, I suppose, the pandemic, the past 15 months? I think so. Um, I, think, I think everyone has, has taken stock a bit on, on what's important. And I think, I think more than ever since we, since we bought the house, you know, we've used this space an incredible amount. And, and it's, it's been... I think it's been a little bit of a getaway in itself. Um, sorry, my mic is after falling out. Um, it's been a little getaway in myself, or in itself, to uh, to just get out. And, and it's we're, we're lucky with the way it's it's um, it's kind of been closed. It's it's very very private, and it's it's just an enjoyable space to be in. And um, as, as you said, it's ever more so than the last kind of eighteen months. Oh, it's beautiful, actually. But. What's your favourite task to get stuck into in the garden? If you had one favourite task above all others, what is it? Um, I think I think it would have to be. Uh, I do enjoy cutting the grass and, and maintaining the lawn. Um, I get a fair bit of stick for it from from different angles and different people. Um, some that won't be mentioned, but it's it's a particular enjoyment of mine to to have it looking well and. Uh, and golf green like almost so that that would be probably the number one how do you keep it like that like i saw one of your instagrams the other day i was looking at it and you mentioned the seaweed i mean how do you make your grass look like that just asking for a friend <laughs> look i've been lucky i've i've got some help from from uh, a couple of different people uh, stephen forrest one who, who looks after uh parky cueve and, and parky ring and he's He's a good friend, and he's been a very good uh, contact with with giving me the the few bits and bobs to to get it as it is today. Uh, but as you mentioned, I think the organic seaweed is a great one. One being organic, uh, and and two, you can put it out every maybe ten or twelve days, and 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 keep it nice and that that deep green, and keep it well fed. That's that's the main thing is is keeping it fed and cut regularly is is the other thing, which is obviously an enjoyment of mine. So uh, some people find it a chore, but uh, I don't mind getting out there every second day and, and, and giving it a cut. When you do cut it, do, do you find it relaxing actually? I was talking in the, the, our last session you know, about mindfulness and how you can feel better just by being out and about in the garden. Like, Do you find gardening, cutting the grass, do you find that very relaxing? Yeah, I have to say I find every aspect of it relaxing. It's it's it really is lovely to come out and 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 even with, with the kids, um, you know, it's it's really enjoyable. Indy's starting Indy's five now and she's probably starting to, to enjoy keeping it tidy and, and look after her as well and she's uh she likes the, the, the pruners, I have to keep a good eye on her. Um but she she loves the uh, clipping a couple of things, keeping the edges tidy and that kind of thing and just getting out here together or, or on my own, you know, after you know, even after training, um, you know, it's, it's intense at times or, you know, after games, uh, you know, the day after, the weekends after games, it's, it's nice to come out here and, uh, and just be on your own or be with the family and, and, and have your own time and space. 
What do you take most pride in in the garden? I think you mentioned maybe the Japanese maple, your archway and your planters. Let's start with the Japanese maple maybe. Yeah, we, we moved, um, myself and Jack, um, from the pavilion in, in, in Ballygar. We moved that two years ago from my grandmother's house, actually. Um, I actually remember her getting it from one of her friends who who's passed away since um, she gave it to my grandmother. I, I don't know how long ago, but we moved it about two years ago, and we kind of didn't know whether it was going to take or not. But thankfully, it's, it's, uh, it's looking really healthy at the moment. That's probably the most special piece I have um, obviously been my grandmother who would be 95 I think in November um, to have that now to, to, to live on and, and pass it on to whoever whoever ends up here um, it's, it's a nice piece to have absolutely and your archway yeah that's a it's an area that was actually damaged in uh, in storm Ophelia uh, to be fair the, the previous owner there's a house had a, had a beautiful arch there um, it was kind of it was an old wisteria and uh, and a climbing rose, and um, unfortunately the, the whole thing was pulled down, and, and we lost the we lost both actually the rose and the wisteria. So um, it's been nice to to kind of pull it back the way the way they had it. To be honest, um, I planted two new wisteria um, climbing the uh, the fire posts, and um, we got an archway from from the pavilion as well. Uh, which is a rose as well, a white rose, um, to go over it. So I, I think that's that area is looking really well at the moment. Have you ever made a gardening mistake? Like if I was to ask you what's been your biggest gardening mistake, would you have one? I've, I've made a huge amount of them. I think the first thing I, I did wrong was kind of rushing into the garden. I didn't, I'd be very impatient that way. I, I would just want to get stuck in and um, when we first bought the house uh, I've, I did loads of things to the garden that I've had to undo since um, put plants in the wrong places um, I think the big thing is, is knowing where your sun is and where it comes and and, and where it finishes there's a spot in, in, in the back where the, the sun sets and I need to put a any book I read says make sure you have a seat wherever the, the sun sets last at the last time of day so I must get a, a bench for the, the top corner because um, I still haven't got to that, but I've made plenty of them, plenty of mistakes. Uh, you mentioned your children earlier getting involved in the garden. I mean, how did you get them involved? Did you kind of give them jobs to do? What way did you get them involved? You know, kids, they, they love water. So they, they absolutely love when we, when we go out kind of once a week and, and do a big watering session. Um, they've got their own their own watering cans and inevitably if not two of them the three of us end up soaked coming back in but I think that's that, that was probably the, their most enjoyable thing but as I said Indy's getting into proper looking after things and giving out to me if things aren't tidy and and um, and, and and she's just enjoying being outdoors uh, we were here last night till half nine it was ten o'clock it was probably poor parenting but it, it was such a lovely evening she was scooting up and down and we were sitting outside having a drink and it was it was just really enjoyable and uh, and, and they love it. I know, that's such good fun. And listen, we mentioned the planters earlier. Would you mind bringing us over to see them? I think that's what my nice director is saying. I think they're... Will you bring us over to see your planters? No problem. No problem, yeah. We'll have a wander up. And you can tell me about them on the way. Yeah, the, so the, they were in probably two maybe two years at the moment now um they're uh they're predominantly f for for veg at the moment um they're uh th they're a good height for me to be honest you have a bit of a bad lower back and um they're kind of two or three feet high and it's just a nice way to garden um at the moment there is uh, sorry i know this mic is falling out um plenty of plenty of lettuce rocket we've some beetroot cabbage uh, the strawberries are just netted up. We lost all our strawberries last year to the birds, so I'm not going to get caught by that again. Uh, carrots and the peas are uh, are climbing here, so it's uh, no, it looks really healthy at the moment. It's great. It looks fantastic. You know, when you say you lost your strawberries last year, what what did you do differently that you're not going to lose them this year? What did you learn? I just, do you know what? I just 
a, a small bit of netting for the birds. Um, we, we, ha we actually have, I planted some other strawberries uh, in the beds along, so I don't uh, deprive them of uh, a few strawberries, but the birds, they took the whole lot last year, so I just put a little bit of netting up and it stops them, uh, it stops them getting stuck into uh, to all my strawberries. They look fantastic actually. Um, and uh, would you, like in terms of maintaining those two big planters, is, does that require a lot of work? It doesn't to be honest. Um, I just, I didn't put anything really in the winter here. So at that stage, I just, I left them for the winter and, and gave them a good mulch before the springtime to, uh, to give the soil a kind of a, a re-energize and, and just plant away again when, it, when, when the weather got somewhat decent. And um, to be fair, they're, they're just a great height. As I said already for me, it's, 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 it's nice to not have to, to bend down and get stuck into them. And, and they're just, it just saves the back, which is, uh, which is always a plus. And I'm gonna get you to go back to the lawn, but as you're going, what, what's the house behind the planters, the little greenhouse? That's the um, that's the little playhouse that uh, that Jess got for the kids recently. It's a it's a great job actually. It's um, a little hideaway for them. There's a good chance when they've been bowled, they've skedaddled up the back and they're inside in there keeping uh, keeping the head down when I'm when I'm looking for them. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, one of I'm going to ask you. You can go back to where you were seated if you want, um, Peter, and then just say one of our questions I'm going to give to you now from people who've just kind of sent in questions. So Peter, your lawn is amazing. Were you inspired by the groundskeepers who maintain rugby pitches? And you more or less said that earlier, you'd got advice, hadn't you, from that great man? Yeah, yeah, Steve, he's, yeah, I'd be lost without him, to be honest. Um, but yeah, look, do you know what? I was thinking earlier on about that, uh, when, you're, when you're small and you're playing out the back and you're saying, I'd love to, I'd love to be playing on pitches like that. And, Kids love it. They love coming over and kicking around the ball and and uh, and enjoying it. And I suppose to have a surface like that would be be really enjoyable as a as a smallie. So um, that was probably the inspiration for it really for for the smallies. And again, it's it's no it's no chore for me. So I, I do love I love I do love maintaining it. And uh, I suppose it's the hard part. So again, happy days. It kind of seems perfect at the moment, but do you have other plans for your amazing garden? One of our viewers is asking you, do you have other plans? Yeah, we've kind of discussed this. I think, I think um, down the line, probably when the kids are a bit older and they don't need as much space, I'd like to, to probably, I know it sounds mad, but dig up the lawn. I'd, put, I'd like to have a cottage garden that you'd, you'd get a lot of food from, um, you know, put, Put uh, put you know, eight or ten or twelve kind of square beds in that you grow uh, different foods in at different times of the year and and uh, you know I'm not talking about being self-sufficient but you know you could get a good crop of food from from an area that big and and it's something I, we 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 love entertaining and and hosting having people over the house for barbecues and that kind of thing and um, you know to have to have produce that you've you've grown yourself you know we we know ourselves it's it's. It's a different animal, the stuff you grow yourself. It's, it's just stunning. And uh, I think that would be a, a project of mine for a few years down the line yet. Our viewers wants to know, Peter, you do the gardening. Who does the cooking? Uh, Jess would do a lot of the cooking now, to be fair. Um, I, I do like barbecuing, but um, she, she does most of the cooking inside, to be fair enough. She's, she's a very good cook, so I'll give her that. It was a good balance because I suppose she does great cooking and is a great cook and you're a good gardener, a great gardener. Have you found the last, the whole pandemic tough? I mean, and have you found your garden a refuge from that? And have you missed rugby a lot? Yeah, look, we've been, we've been very lucky. We've, we've been one of the few after the first kind of big lockdown that were, we were kind of, given, I suppose, special dispensation to go back to work. So we, we, we spent a lot of time back in, in, in the High Performance Centre in Limerick and, and, and back playing in, in, in Dublin in Ireland. Um, so I've been back up the road travelling and, and uh, it kind of hasn't changed a huge amount since that first real lockdown snap. But again, it's, it's been incredible for us the, just to get out here. Um, 
it's absolutely been a refuge. You know, when you can't get out, um, you know, it's, it's hard even for parents. It's, it's lovely to get out and go for a meal together or, or just spend a bit of time together. And, and, you know, when the kids were in bed um, during the first lockdown, we'd, we'd come out here with the incredible weather and, you know, we just spend a bit of time out here and, and it was a little refuge in itself or, or as, as we've spoken about the gardening and just enjoying the space. Uh, and it's been incredible and it's been, you know, perfect timing for us really to have the place come good. Gardening, of course, it can be tough physical work. I mean, so how did you and do you juggle, I suppose, your rugby responsibilities with everything that has to be done in your garden? Yeah, look, there is days where there's stuff to be done that I, I know that I can't because I've, I have a big session the following day and stuff like that. It's, it's as you said, it, it is a taxing. Um, some, some of the work is, is, is very taxing, you know, when you're transplanting trees or you're removing some, some big stuff in and out or big pots, you know, it's, you want to almost a weekend off to be, uh, to be getting stuck into it. So it, it is a bit of a juggling act, definitely. You have to kind of, there, there is planning goes into it. I, I'm not going to lie. Like I, I'd have, I'd have notes of when, when stuff needs to be done and when I have a gap in, in training weeks and that kind of thing to, to get stuck into the stuff that, that needs a bit more effort. Um, but you know, I'm lucky. A lot of it is, is at a stage now where it's, it's kind of maintaining and just keeping it tidy, really, um, because I'm, I've, I've run out of room, to be honest. So um, it's it, it kind of most of the, the kind of muscle work is, is done at this stage. Did you miss playing rugby during the pandemic, Peter? And did you miss the camaraderie? Because you've always been a part of one rugby team or other. So did you both miss playing the game and did you miss the friends? Yeah, look, it was a good time for me. Uh, it was a good time for a break, but uh, certainly a few weeks you you missed, uh, as you said, the the balls around training. Um, you know, the the regularity of, of us being in. You know, we get maybe three, four, five weeks off, give or take here here in that year. So you know, every other week is, is spent with with a, either the Munster team or the Irish team, and it's. Uh, you know, they're, they're two credible groups of people to be around and it's really enjoyable. It's really something you look forward to going into every day to meet the lads and, and certainly did miss it. Certainly did miss it after a few weeks. Um, and you know what, we still miss at the moment. Obviously games aren't being played in front of stadium or in front of fans in, in big stadiums empty at the moment. And it's, you know, we, we miss people being at grounds massively. Um, you know, the atmosphere isn't there. It's, we're, we're, we're not going to lie to anyone and say it's, it's uh, it's enjoyable to play, and it, it really is. And we're really looking forward to getting stadiums back and people back in stadiums and enjoying, enjoying what we do, and, and us feeding off their their enjoyment and their buzz. Because um, as I said, it's it's definitely a big, you know, hole in a, a hole in what should be an incredible atmosphere for everyone. Did you also find interviewing people um, as I have during the pandemic, Peter? You know, some of them have said. You kind of rethink your life, you relook at life, you rebalance your life. And I suppose so much of your young life has been spent playing rugby, training, being away. But being at home so much, I suppose, with your small children and Jess and stuff, did that make you realise a lot of the time so much of your life does go on rugby? Yeah, it, it definitely, definitely. As I said, I think everyone took took a stock take at some stage over the first lockdown, and you know, you, you see even the way different businesses are gone. How, how you know how people have operated without travelling. You know how much travel there was uh, to meetings and how Zoom has has kicked in. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to change lots of things for the better. Um, you know, I think the most important thing really is, is comes back to is, is family and. You know, to be able to spend a real proper bulk of time. I, I had never spent that kind of time with, with any of my kids. Um, Ralph is only 14 or 15 weeks, so he's he was kind of post that. Um, but uh, Indy, Indy was kind of four and, and Theo two, and I hadn't spent any bulk of time with them really, give or take, maybe a, a week or two in abroad on a holiday. But for, for that length of time, I hadn't. And um, I have to say it was, it was incredible for, for all of us, the kids and, and Jess and myself. It was... Uh, it was a really enjoyable time. We really loved it. Um, and I think a lot of people that feel that way, I think they realise, you know, what's properly important, what's properly important. And, and rugby is hugely important to me, but, you know, I think it'll always come back to, to family, to be honest.
Absolutely, Peter. Well, look, that's all we have time for today. I think everyone's in all reading the questions there of the garden you've created. And I'm looking forward to seeing what your plans are for it this summer. Thanks so much for joining us and taking the time to speak to us today, Peter. And we'll see you all for our next talk at three o'clock when I'm going to be joined by James Kavanagh, Nadia El Farda Usi, and Bloom Manager Gary Graham. Thanks so much. Thanks again, Peter.